Good evening, everyone. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for this awareness program that we would like to organize on behalf of Mankind Specialities. Recording in progress. On the occasion uh, to celebrate Women's Day. Uh, this program is an opportunity for us to raise awareness about heart health in women, which is very critical in today's world. And uh, to discuss the same, we have an eminent cardiologist with us today, Dr. Zakia Khan, who is one of the few women uh, uh, practicing uh, interventional cardiologist in Mumbai, uh, who is currently the head of the Department of Cardiology at Fortis Hospital Kalyan. is is also the part of she's also the part of uh, heart transplantation team with over twenty years of expertise in the field of cardiology with multiple procedures that she has done for different kind of diseases. So uh, with this, I now welcome you, ma'am, for, for all the expertise that you will share with us. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pleasure is mine. Yes, thank you. Uh, ma'am, uh, as, as you know, the objective, uh, we would like to have a few questions thrown to you where you will try to help uh, the woman who's watching how to take care of the heart health in, in today's world. Let me start with one question uh, initially. I wanted to understand what is the current picture of heart health as far as women is concerned in this country? So overall uh, incidence of heart disease or heart health is on the rise in India. In fact, uh, it is rising, but people are not aware that they need to take care of their heart. Most of the time, women are more worried about uh, diseases like breast cancer. In fact, uh, if just for the knowledge of common people, heart disease is a bigger killer. Heart failure is a bigger killer than breast cancer. So most of the female concentrate on uh, detection of breast cancers and cervical cancer, which is very good, but ignore their heart health. So almost rising incidence is there and the incidence has gone up between four to six percent in India. So you can see that the heart health of Indian women is deteriorating. Yes. Okay. Uh, but why is it women is very prone for this particular disease? We know that men are equally affected, but what makes women prone to this particular heart health? Disease. So overall, it is said that women are protected from ischemic heart disease, like uh, the blockages which common people talk of. People say that women are protected uh, from heart disease till they are menopausal. And uh, after menopause, their incidence is the same. And in fact, their morbidity is mortality is higher than men when they achieve menopause. And uh, particularly, it is important to know that in women, the disease uh, occurs early in certain subsets of women. So if you have a history of premature coronary artery disease in your family, that means the heart disease occurred in them before below 50 years of age, then you are at risk, whether you are male or female, to developing heart disease. Secondly, if you have comorbidities, so if you have comorbidities like uncontrolled blood pressure, uncontrolled diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, hypothyroidism, chronic kidney disease, and so also uh, certain problems uh, like extreme obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, and presence of polycystic ovary disease in young female, in fact, makes them more prone to developing future heart illness because Polycystic ovary disease by itself is a marker of insulin resistance in the body. Yes. So I think these are some of the factors we need to look into. Yes. If you think that you have any of these risk factors, please get yourself checked for presence of heart disease and investigate early. Okay, ma'am. It's clear that uh, you listed out all the conditions which makes the women prone to these heart diseases. Uh, can you also tell us what are the symptoms a woman should look after, especially after 30, uh, to, for, her, for her to understand that she's going through the trouble? So uh, it's said that women present 
with more atypical symptoms when they develop a coronary event or they have symptoms of heart disease or in common men's language we call it heart pain or anginal pain okay. now in women the heart pain can come as a warning uh, to a development or precursor of heart attack the various types of symptoms are number 1 angina so the angina means heart pain which resembles pain of a acidity or gas or stuck up gas in the chest and many people ignore it thinking that it is acidity but remember if you get these symptoms at odd time of the day if you get these symptoms on exercise if you get chest pain back pain pain in either arms chest pain radiating to both arms chest pain radiating to left arm pain radiating to throat and jaw and even toothache can be a symptom of heart disease so anything that comes up on exertion and comes suddenly it makes you sweat and maybe even feel like nauseated or vomit is a warning sign that this could be a heart people with comorbidities like with diabetes and hypertension many times don't develop severe chest pain or they develop is breathing difficulty so somebody can present with breathing difficulty on walking mix which makes them sweat and stop another symptom is which is common in females is profound fatigue they feel that they can't do any activity they just get tired so profound fatigue can also be a presentation of heart disease so also palpitations that come up on exercises palpitations that come after a meal palpitations that remain prolonged and then culminate in chest pain these are also symptoms of heart disease the first symptom of heart disease also can be a sudden collapse or a sudden cardiac death so such unfortunate patients may not be able to reach the hospital if not revived in time so these are some of the cardinal symptoms of heart disease and most of the patients almost 80% of the patients get a warning before they get a proper established heart attack so don't ignore symptoms don't try to diagnose your condition please consult a cardiologist if you have any of these symptoms another problem that women could have is known as heart failure so the heart failure presents with swelling of the body swelling of the feet distension of the abdomen difficulty in breathing breathing in sitting position breathing in night lying down position in fact cardiac patient presents with what is known as nocturnal dyspnea that means breathing difficulty at night or on lying down so these are all cardinal symptoms of heart disease and they should not be ignored and should be investigated thoroughly by competent doctors yes ma'am nicely pointed out uh, in a simple language i think uh, everyone listening to this can quickly relate to it and keep a watch of that thank you so much and on the lifestyle front uh, we know the lifestyle is is changing a lot every year every decade rather and uh, if would you like to talk about those mistakes health related mistakes on the lifestyle front which put the woman at risk of these heart diseases so uh, women i feel of both socio economic strata more low socio economic strata as well as high socio economic strata each have their own issues so i feel that women who are from lower middle class uh, income group these are the women who are going to work as well as managing their house so i feel these women ignore their nutrition so most of the time they are busy making you know tiffins for their kids for their husbands and they hardly have time to have their breakfast and they run in a train a crowded train stress and maybe buy something all healthy on the way to eat like a vada pav or some bhajiya you know something that is full of trans fat they could be eating just to satisfy their craving and to reach in time to the office so i personally feel there are people who ignore their nutritional needs and end up eating 
carbohydrates very high carbohydrate and very high trans fat containing food uh street food food that has oil full of oil and it is a reused oil the reused oil is supposed to be more harmful almost 10 times more harmful than the oil that is used only one time there are other problems of higher socio economic strata that these people eat, tend to overeat tend to have more food they tend to eat more out they tend they eat less at home plus habits of uh, smoking habits of you know consumption of illicit drugs these are all the things that make you prone for lifestyle diseases mind you i have even seen people from lower socio economic strata having uh, smoking bds and applying tobacco as a base so this these are very bad very bad risk factors for women to develop heart disease this is one very important factor of heart disease which is many times not looked in people think that no tobacco smoking where women but i do find in all strata of society that it is consumed uh secondly in uh, lifestyle we see that uh, there are people who do not exercise at all there are people who think that they have done uh, enough work at home so they don't need to go for a walk and in bargain keep on gaining weight weight and develop obesity and then complications of obesity so also uh not getting adequate sleep many women don't get adequate sleep they sleep in the night very very late they are the last one to sleep after feeding their husbands who come late they sleep late and get up early in the morning again to take care of their children so inadequate sleep is another thing that makes you prone for heart diseases and even stroke lack of exercise and nowadays i think not even lack of exercise at times it is over exercise so there are people who are not adequately toned or not adequately got into a regime of exercise suddenly get into an over exercising more lifting weights doing an over activity at times can kill you while exercising so remember that if you get into a exercise program make sure that you have got yourself checked thoroughly before getting into a gym or getting into an exercise program i always recommend that if you are 25 and above you want to join a gym make sure that, that you get yourself tested get your stress test done and then go for such strenuous activities so these are some of the important lifestyle factors that are ignored many a times and then they culminate into a habit and then make you a patient which eventually lands on to our table for angioplasty or for bypass right rightly said now you stated about a uh, word on this already about menopause how does it affect uh, or relate to heart diseases uh what did you say i'm sorry i didn't get it yeah i was talking about the relationship between menopause and the heart risk so when you talk of menopause uh, women are protected estrogen has a protective role for development of atherosclerosis as well as keeping the arteries supple with adequately dilated reduces the incidence of hypertension but after development of menopause a woman goes into a transition mode where in the hormones the female hormones are going down and the testosterone is beginning to rise so this is the time when there is a significant variation in your heart rate the heart beat tends to jump the blood pressure tends to fluctuate and then the cholesterol metabolism also takes a hit your cholesterol hdl cholesterol starts rising the uh, falling and the ldl starts rising and the protector effect of uh, hormones then goes off from your vascular system and then you become as bad or as good as a male to develop coronary artery disease and then on top of that if you have comorbidities like blood pressure diabetes smoking or a second hand smoking 
then you are likely to develop heart disease very soon after developing menopause so menopause prevents the uh the gain that a woman gets when she is still actively menstruating is totally lost when she gets menopause so she becomes almost same as a man for a risk for heart disease right i think uh people at that age group right now will be more conscious listening to this and ensure that they go to a you know, cardiologist to have a check on that thank you ma'am and uh, you also mentioned about the polycystic ovary disease cyst in the ovary and and affect the uh, increase the risk of heart disease could you elaborate a little on this so in fact nowadays you see uh, a lot of women young women suffering from polycystic ovarian disease now polycystic ovarian disease is a marker of inherited gene of insulin resistance so women with polycystic ovaries have menstrual irregularity that's why they go to the gynecologist and the gynecologist then diagnoses polycystic ovary disease and if this polycystic ovary disease is not treated well most of the time i see that the patient is given a prescription of a hormone to have a menstrual cycle rather than treating the basic pathology of <clears throat> insulin resistance so many people who develop polycystic ovary disease have a higher incidence of hypertension have a higher incidence of ischemic heart disease and a higher incidence of, of developing future metabolic syndrome because they are already into part of a metabolic syndrome and uh, fertility also takes a hit with polycystic ovary disease if not treated in time so overall health suffers if you suffer from polycystic ovary disease and not being taken care of well the most important thing in polycystic ovary disease is to reduce weight to regularly exercise to improve your insulin resistance of course there are drugs which are some of the anti diabetic drugs like metformin pioglitazone and uh, these drugs are known to improve uh, uh, insulin resistance and reduce the risk of polycystic ovaries so overall polycystic ovary incidence has only gone up in current situation and its complications have also gone up so i feel polycystic ovary disease is a marker for a future cardiovascular event and we need to monitor these female very regularly and they themselves should monitor their blood pressure their cholesterol and all other risk factors sure ma'am that was a quick quick summary of our information uh, having put everything i think we discussed about all kind of risk that that woman is getting into Uh, but would you like to give us a list of things that women should follow in terms of awareness in terms of lifestyle on the whole comprehensively six seven things that should they should be following in order to avoid heart diseases so uh, most of the time i would suggest that uh, most of the female females should have a right nutrition have the food at right time and in right quantities keep your weight in check keep it in balance and watch for any symptoms that you develop on exercise and regularly exercise don't think that only working at home is enough you need to have toning of your muscles stretching of your all joints and especially more so if you are touching menopause so regular exercise is also an important thing nutrition is very important and i personally feel women tend to ignore their numbers so what are those numbers most of the time when i see in my opd women come with some health checkup reports and the health checkup reports are like a women package so they have gone and get themselves tested through a gynecologist got their pap smear done but no one bothers to know what is their blood pressure what is their sugar what is their lipid profile and what is their overall risk factor do you have a family history of any of these cardiovascular disease and cancer risk factors so you have a family history of hypertension diabetes heart disease stroke if you have 
any of these risk factors, please know your numbers also. So go through a health checkup where you can go through all your cardiovascular checks as well as your numbers of lipids, sugars, blood pressure. And once you know them, you may be surprised many times that you went for a routine gynec checkup and you realize that you are a diabetic. Or maybe you realize that you have thyroid or you have very high cholesterol. So you need to know your numbers, especially if you have reached, say, gone above the age of 30 years. Now, I, nowadays, I feel age is not become a, not a bar anymore for developing heart disease. My youngest male patient of heart disease was an 18-year-old male who was having chain smoking. My youngest uh, female patient was a 30-year-old female who had multi-vessel disease and I had to put stents in multiple arteries. So age is not a bar. The moment you have any of these risk factors, please do your annual checkups. And if during these annual checkups, you find that you are diabetic, maybe you are hypertensive, make sure that you seek the right advice. And if a doctor tells you to take medicines, please take medicines. In fact, blood pressure is one of the biggest silent killer in heart disease. It contributes to about 30 to 40% of mortality in, by strokes, heart disease, renal failure and heart failure. So if you are hypertensive, Make sure that your blood pressure is below 140 and diastolic is below 90. If you are diabetic, make sure that your HbA1c is below 6 and you don't have proteinuria in your urine and you are on the right treatment. Make sure that your cholesterol is under control with good diet and you needed some type of treatment. And keep your thyroid under control. Most, of, most important is Take care of yourselves. As women, we are more worried about how my son is doing, how my husband is doing. But we don't bother about how we are doing. Start loving yourself. Start taking care of yourself. You will see new heights. So I feel all women should take care of themselves. Love yourself and take care of your body like you would take care of your kids. That is going to take you a long way with good health and even if you develop an event you will be able to tackle it and deal with it more effectively than otherwise yes well said ma'am uh, it was once believed that uh, only people above 60 do get all the heart diseases and now with all the experiences uh, based on your clinical practice that you're sharing with us it appears the threshold has come down drastically you know young people get affected and ma'am, to all, all that you said, uh, it needs it definitely needs a support from the family. So, what would you like to tell to the family members uh, to take how and how to take care of the woman and his heart health? So, I think as a family, in fact, the way mother takes care of you, you should also take care of your mother. The way your wife takes care of you must take care of your wife, and at at any point that you feel that she is not ignoring herself, you need to rise and you need to take care of her. So all uh, there are females who tend to ignore saying, no, no, even though the husband says, no, you are not looking okay, let me take you to the doctor. You would say, no, no, I think next week my son's exams are there. So I'll go after that. Then an another excuse will come. Then I'll go after that. So make sure that if you find any red flags, Put your foot down and take her to the right doctor. That would be the best care. Make sure that she eats well. She eats well in time. And uh, many times in our uh, culture, many people feel that uh, men need to eat first and then the women. So even if the husband comes at 12 in the night, the wife has to wait till then. So I think we should get over that fact. Women can eat earlier and you know, avoid all the complications of eating late, remaining awake along with their husband. So husbands at least should take care of their wives in that way and tell them to eat and be ready when he comes. So I personally feel kids, husband, anybody, they all need to 
we as a family take care of each other and especially take care of their women if you find that they are ignoring their health. Absolutely, ma'am. The family members should definitely, as you said, feel responsible for the health of the women in the family. So, so I think you, you answered all the questions so nicely in a very simple language, which is very important uh, for for anybody to understand. And hopefully, uh, the, the, the last 30 minutes, you would have raised the awareness on the heart health for women. It's such a pleasure having you in this call to talk about uh, the importance of women's health, especially the heart health. Uh, with this, on behalf of everything, everyone, mankind specialities, I thank you for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure was mine. Yes.